Cuss Corner, it's Cuss Corner. Cuss Corner, it's Cuss Corner. He's got the hottest takes with the highest stakes. He should be president of the United States, but it's Cuss Corner, it's Cuss Corner. Cuss Corner. <laughs> First, I don't like the name of this. I think we need to come up with a better name for it. Besides, we gave you a chance and you said. Tim's Corner. Yeah, but I'd come up with better ideas. Like, Top Cat's Corner would be better, actually. He, he would like people to call him Top Cat, by the way. Well, it is one of the nicknames that I have been called over the I years. I feel like more like you, you... Snagglepuss. Oh, people. I'm Tim. I've got opinions. <laughs> Exit stage left. Hark. <laughs> this is already off the rails. So, Top Cat Corner. That's Tim's suggestion. Sounds like a really... That, that sounds like something that a dumb kid from, like, Sarnia would call his hockey podcast. Just, I mean, it did top shelf beauties. It all just sounds the same. So, on the show right now, Garyan is obviously here. Garyan Lives Matter, so Garyan is back. Yep. How are you doing? Good. You ready for this? Uh, I feel like everyone needs a couple weeks to sort of, like, cleanse themselves of the custiness of these takes. Yeah. So, it's good to have a little time off. Yeah, well, we're not going to make this an every week thing. I think that's too much, Tim, and too right, much guest. This is the creed argument, as Tim is the creed of this podcast. Yeah, yeah. well, if you follow me on Twitter, you get enough of my takes anyway. Agreed. I've had, I've had enough of your takes. Primarily, that's where we derive this list from, is just things that Tim has tweeted about in the last seven days. There's lots of it. So, Tim, the floor is yours, though. I'm not going to reveal what I have written down here to you, and you have not revealed the takes no. that you want to give us. So, hit me up. What is your first take on Cass Corner? I don't like that name. Uh, the first thing I'm particularly annoyed with, and something that's been annoying me for a while, is this tendency we have that people are using at any major event, either a concert or a sporting event, Everybody has their phone out the entire time recording and taking photos of things. Nobody anymore actually watches the thing they are at. They are all experiencing this verisimilitude of watching the show or watching the event through their phone to take photos of an event that they'd like to remember because they weren't actually watching it when it was live. Every, I mean, it's the most stark vision of this I have, I saw this on Twitter several months ago, it was a photo in 2005 when Pope Benedict became Pope in Rome. You know, St. Peter's Square is filled with people to see him come out for the first time, and there's no, nothing there other than just candles. In 2013, when Pope Francis became Pope, every person, every thousand of people in the crowd had their phone out to take photos. And I think that is the sign of a diseased society, that everybody has to experience things through a mediating force like their phone. Put your phone away. Stop we're filming everything. Stop taking photos of everything. Actually experience the moments you are in. That, because you're not going to go back and look at all the various things on your phone anyway. It's dumb. It is stupid. And millennials are ruining experiences by doing this. You're a millennial. Which gives me the best uh, position to criticize. You um, know, I, mean, I, I have several follow-up questions to this. Um, first and foremost, Tim, do you own a phone? Of course. Okay. I just spent an hour in the Apple store last week because the touch function on my phone wasn't working. And they kept me there all day for at least an hour and a half or so in the Apple store after I made an appointment just to get it fixed. So, yes, I have a phone. Okay. Well, the Apple store appointments are much like doctors and dentist appointments. Yeah, it's they, they, more they, of a rough they, estimate. Yeah, you're like, it's you know, give or take two hours each way. Even though you, know, you make the appointment and it's the middle of the afternoon and there's 30 people working there, the place is jammed. No, people anyway, demand, that we're on there's only so ahead. many geniuses who can be hired at Apple. I think you should become an Apple genius, Tim. That would be awesome. I, I don't think it would be that hard. Well, I don't know. You seem to have you seem to struggle using any sort of technology. Tim, what I, do you is, think? Is this what this really boils down to? That you're mad because you can't figure out how to take a picture on your phone? No, I have pictures on my no, phone. No, you I don't. That's I, not true. It is true. Mm. I can snap a photo at an event. One or two photos. That's all you need. You don't need your phone out taking constant video and, and pictures of everything you are seeing. Okay. It's this so this leads me to my next question, though, Tim. When was the last time you were at an event? Uh, well, I was at the event uh, in Phoenix during the golf tournament. Okay, fair. When and was I the last time you were at a concert? One photo when I went in there, just so that I had a, one photo. I didn't spend the whole time 
video recording everybody. Yeah, he was just Snapchatting himself the entire time. To be fair, Phil has a restraining order against him. He's not allowed to take video of And him. at that event, I took out my phone and filmed a video of Cuss touching Phil. And then just ruined Phil for the entire week. But you didn't have your phone out the entire time no, filming recording. I was way too point. drunk. <laughs> and, you know, yes, just yesterday it occurred to me, I looked on the train when I was going in, and every single human being was on their phone. And I just, there's got to be something wrong about this. You know, one of my favorite books. Why would you rather do on the train? Yeah, would you rather just sit there and stare at you? Because I wouldn't. Well, usually I read the paper. Well, you can read you things can read on articles your phone, on your phone, yeah. Yeah, well, I don't like to do that. I like to hold it in my well, hand. Well, m- most people have evolved to the point where they're okay with reading stuff on their phone. I like to do the crossword puzzle. You can do a crossword puzzle on your phone. Oh, that's ridiculous. What kind of monster would do that? You? You know, you need to actually not, yes. write the answers in. Um, then you have to carry around. A, you're, not only do you have to carry around your phone, which you're carrying around with you anyway, then you have to go get a newspaper. You have to buy a newspaper. You can do all this stuff for free. Well, no, you can just pick up the free newspapers that they have. They have the crossword puzzles nah, in there. Yeah, the the, the crossword kind of... puzzles and the free newspapers are real cussed like you. They're easy. They're not like I like to do the Saturday New York Times ones. Tim on likes Saturdays. to do the People's Magazine crossword puzzle like my grandma. Yeah, the jumble. Okay, final question <laughs> pertaining to this phone issue. Um, are you one of those people who believes if a photo is taken of you, it will steal your soul? And is that why you're so concerned about this? <laughs> no. I just think... And I think it's just intuitive. Like, there's something wrong with going to an event and not actually watching or experiencing it yourself, but instead trying to, to capture the entire event on your phone, on video, or with pictures. Like, there's something upside down, inside out about that. See, one of my very favorite books, and if people haven't read it, they should, is Thoreau's Walden, right, where he talks about men living lives of quiet desperation, and that all of our inventions distract us from serious things in life. He's absolutely right. That insight, even though it's like from the 1840s, is still just as penetrating then as, uh, now as it was then. We, these inventions and baubles we invent for ourselves are making us weaker. The are making cotton us less gin. ties to the world. See, when Tim goes on the train, he doesn't listen to podcasts on his phone. He emails the place. Actually, sorry, he writes a letter to each company and gets a transcript of that podcast so he can read it on the train. I was like Jake Seal yesterday was trying to convince someone that the abbreviation of tomorrow is T-O-M-W, which it is not. It's T-M-R. Or T-M-R-W or something like that. There's no O in the – you take out the vowels and abbreviations. Everyone knows that. But anyway, his response to my my, – me refuting that point was – I was doing this before texting on the internet, to which my response was, Why? Where why? Are you, where are you doing this? Are you, are you abbreviating things in letters? Because I don't think that's going to speed up the process in which someone receives their letter in the mail. <laughs> well, I mean, um, I would say that I have a lot of my own personal abbreviations that I write because as a student at school, you know, going to lectures in the time before basically anybody had laptops in class, you made all your notes by hand and you learned to make little abbreviations for words. Oh, sure. You, yeah, but that, that's for that. You're not using that with other people, though. No, I'm not asserting that that is the way that the abbreviation must be written, or that anyone else needs to interpret my hieroglyphs. See, the best abbreviation is Waze. Yeah, Waze is a fantastic. Waze is pretty good. What's Waze? It's just what are you saying? Like, what's up tonight? Waze, Waze? Question mark. That's a big Waze time PM. saver. That's that's Waze not bad. PM. Yeah. We was always in Scarborough. Just you reaching. Oh, you reaching? Yeah, which I, is I, just basically, are you coming over? A lot of people felt like that had drug paraphernalia attached to it. But, paraphernalia? Uh, like it was just hanging off? For the hash pipe or something? <laughs> well, just that it, it, it somehow was, was tangentially connected with drugs and doing drugs or selling drugs. Well, but no, it's just, are you hanging out tonight? Yeah, but you're in Scarborough, so I think that is a very logical well, it's implied. connection. Well, that's the thing. We don't have to even talk about it. It's just implied. Oh, ah, okay. See, that makes sense. Yeah. So back to Tim's thing about the phones. I'm kind of with him. Like, I, Oh, yeah, me too. I, I, I'm, I'm not one to have my phone out the entire time, but no. I will take a few videos of whatever I'm at or take a few pictures. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that. My problem is the people who live exclusively through Well, yeah, it's, but it's more, the problem is more that there's people now who live to have their lives be validated by others and not so much validated by their own by their self like you're, you're at a concert to enjoy the concert but now you want people to know you're at the concert you want people to be jealous that you're at the concert you want your ex to see you're out doing stuff like it's that that's the the wrong thing here is that you're living your life for someone else which yeah, which yeah, does deeply problematic yes so i don't know yeah, the solution is that like bring your phone to augusta tim, right tim isn't always wrong and this kind of uh, this happened when I saw Chappelle, and Chappelle made you lock up your phones. Absolutely. Before you went in, no one could have a phone on the entire thing, and yeah. everyone seemed to have a good time. Nothing happened like, in that hour where it was like, oh, my God. 
Well, Norm MacDonald had a good joke to end his special uh, that came out this week where he's basically, uh, he was telling a joke through the uh, point of view of Hitler's dog. (laughs) And he had a line that just sort of like, in a vacuum, the line was just, Adolf Hitler's the greatest person on earth. And he said, he said explicitly, this is why we tell you to not record things because I didn't need anyone taking a video of me saying that out of context. So (laughs) I I think it's a good reason at comedy shows especially. Yeah, it would make a lot of sense. And you, you want... If, let's say, Chappelle's working on a new set and you take a video of it and post it online, then you know, his special's ruined. Yeah, and I think, I'm not sure if it was you who told me this, or maybe you were at the same set of shows, but uh, a producer who works in our office, Colin Van Owen, was saying he was at a show where Chappelle basically ended the show with 25 minutes of just, like, riffing. Tell- yeah, riffing, yeah. just saying, like, this is what happened at Comedy Central, and just going off, and he's like, this is... This, is, this isn't going to be funny. This is just, like, me telling you a story yeah. now. I have a microphone, and you're going to listen. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can never go to an advanced screening of a movie, too, which I've been to in the past. They take your phones from you before yeah, you go in. Yeah, they do. They do. So they take, it, they take it away like your shoelaces if you get thrown no, in they, a they, drunk they tank? No, they seal them up. They seal them up like in a bag you sign, and then you sign it when you leave. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they were doing at these comedy shows, too. I think you're going to see more and more people gravitate towards that. Just get, I certainly hope so. And it, I think it would all, sporting it, yeah. it, it would also be really annoying being a stand-up comic, too, or being a performer and just have a whole bunch of... I, I get it at a concert. Like, yeah. there's going to be a whole bunch of people filming their favorite song or whatever. Or like, we, Tim and I have a friend that just records 100% of his life. Yeah, mm-hmm. it sucks. I, I mean, at a concert, but, you I know, you found... Never, you never ask know what Michael, to... Ask Michael Richards whether recording you at a comedy club is good for your there, career. There you go. And to go back to our friend, you never know when you're going to see a dead deer on the side of the road and snap it out. Or just some turtle walking around. Do you that feel I like he just wants his life to be Ed TV? Book. Maybe. We're getting close to Ed TV. We are. And then eventually we'll upgrade to the Truman Show and it'll just be better. That's true. That, which, which Ed TV came after Truman Show, correct? Yeah, but Ed TV was more like reality TV, where the Truman Show yeah. was like scripted reality TV. Everyone yeah. was in on it besides him. But I just feel like Ed TV was the, the conceit of that movie from the production studio was hey, let's do the Truman Show, but different, but worse. All right, Tim, this take wasn't cussed enough. What's your next one? Uh, well, I've got a few here on the list. I've okay. got. Why I think Mother's Day slash flowers are a rip. Okay. Why that's let's, good. Let's, yeah, that's that, topical. That, that's very topical. Let's go there. Mother's Day. Why do you hate your mother? Okay. So, so you have to very carefully move around this subject. This better be better than because every day is Mother's Day. Is this because the Books didn't sponsor my show this year and you didn't know where to get flowers? I didn't. I bought my mother some Harry's uh, Shave and it just didn't work <laughs> out. <laughs> Great product, but just uh, like Mother's Day... Listen, we all love our mothers, and it's important it to have you. a celebration of mothers. But the idea that we have to have a special day set aside to celebrate our mother it is hokey because really what we're celebrating is giving them a gift, and being forced to give a gift on a particular day just feels forced. You know, it would be better just to give a gift to your mother, not because it's Mother's Day and it's expected, but because that's just what you want to do. It's a created it, – it, 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 it's an invented holiday uh, – for corporate purposes. Now, listen, I'm not going to bash corporations or their right to make money, but it's a rip. And flowers are the worst part of Mother's Day because flowers are a total rip. There's no way that a bouquet of roses needs to cost eighty, ninety, a hundred dollars, or various flower arrangements have to cost two, three hundred dollars at a shot when you're buying them, plus a delivery fee. I just don't understand how. These companies, why, why we continue to spend money on these things. They're such a rip. You're just cheap. No, well, see, this is exactly what I didn't want, I wanted to avoid, was that type of, because I spend lots of money on Mother's Day, and I'm happy to do it, is what one does. It, you but know what, it, 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 it doesn't sound like you're happy to do it. It does I sound like you spend a lot whole, of money, though. I'd say if you're even considering whole. a flower arrangement above $100, $150. As someone who lives a good you know, two time zones away from their mother. I like Mother's Day because I don't really have to get her anything. I might send her something and I'll, I'll forget because I haven't done it yet, so there it's not going to make it there in two days. Yep. It reminds me to call her. What I go months call, without talking to her. What if you, like, call a shop in Nova Scotia, you know, and order from there as opposed to, like, wouldn't it be able to deliver that day? You have to understand where I'm from. We don't have these sorts of things. Right, okay. Okay, that's not true. I did the, that very thing this week. Really? Yes, I called. There's multiple florists, and I called a florist that I like. Yeah, but you're saying you're telling me they're a rip. I don't want to be ripped off. Well, I mean, listen, the price is fair compared to what every other florist charges. Just the whole principle of flowers and Mother's Day is is very expensive. You know what it is, Tim? It's this damn participation generation where if you just have (laughs) the moms with the good kids who get presents just because, 
there's going to be moms out there that feel left out. So you got to make a day. Everyone's got to get their participation flowers. And it's fair for everybody. And also, I think it's sexist that you didn't bring up Father's Day as well. So you're saying well, you Father's like fathers more short, than it, mothers. No one, consider how, in your life how much money you've spent on Mother's Day compared to Father's Day. Would you say it's even in the same realm of close? No. Of course not. Um, it's like one one hundredth. Exactly. I, I generally don't give my dad anything for Father's Day. Yeah, but I, find I, what, I, wa- I watch the U.S. Open. Well, that's the thing. I find I do experiences <laughs> with my dad, but I feel like I've bought baseball tickets a bunch of times. Like, I don't know. We'll go do no, something. I, I, just, I just think flowers and the whole Mother's Day racket just... The it's racket. It's a guilt trip to make people have to Big talk flower. to their mothers. And they should be doing it anyway. And we shouldn't have to need a special day to set aside to do these things. All right, that wasn't hot enough. Next Tim one. loves right. moms. I think black jujubes are the best type of jujubes. Oh, yeah, he's also in on black licorice, too. That's bad. Objectively, yes. Well, first, it's just called licorice, really, because that's it, anything else is a, is a type of licorice. Black licorice is licorice. It's also gross. It's excellent. No, it's not. Well, N- 99 because, out of 100 people would disagree with you. Well, just because your palate hasn't evolved past that of a five-year-old doesn't mean... Uh, you're the one people. calling me out on, a, yes. uh, on an unevolved palate. Tim, what do you eat every day besides cigarettes and black coffee? Well, neither of those things are things to eat. So, so far you've listed nothing. Well, I know I've seen you consume cigarettes before, just, you know, when you have no lighter and you need to get your nicotine fix. <laughs> I eat all kinds of things. Do you? Yeah. It's nugs. Yeah, he, no, he loves nugs. He loves uh, oh, un- unripe we can, we can avocados. We can talk about that, too. Popcorn sandwich. Oh, yeah. yeah. Tell me, Tim, um, as someone who used no. to live off making two slices of toast, putting mayonnaise on it, popping a bag of popcorn, putting then the popcorn the in the middle, and eating it as a sandwich, you're going to talk to me about what I eat? Well, that was also like eight years ago. I haven't eaten that in a long time. And we're talking about the sophistication of our palates. Mine is obviously more sophisticated. Because I had special you K for breakfast this morning, for example. You, you, had, you don't have stuff like that. You had what? Special K for breakfast this morning. Yeah, I mean, my, my unevolved palate cannot handle special K. No, the only reason that you eat, eat special K chocula. is because you don't... I don't eat cereal because I'm not a child. Well, it's, uh, but cereal is for all ages. No, it's not. It says but so right on the box. It says good for all ages, Okay. Like there are like shredded wheat, for example, or special K. Is you eat like it's food. not the depression. You eat like an eighty-year-old. No, I don't. Yes, you do. Well, no, I do not. Uh, what you have? What? What did you have for lunch? Mush. I actually no. gruel. You ever made one of those craft pizzas from scratch? No. Like in the box. Wait. No. Wait. What? <laughs> I made. I what I made for lunch. So like, why? Get, wait, why you, wait. Wait. So you get like get dough? Are you talking about a pizza lunchable? No, no, no. It's like a box, and like the dough is there. You have to like mix the water in it, and then let the dough rise. And it comes with a can of sauce, and like the Parmesan cheese, and the herbs. And then you put it in the oven, and it bakes, and then you put your own stuff on it. He's living in the future. This is like beyond fusion cuisine. (laughs) And I'm surprised you said craft pizza. I'm surprised you didn't say craft sandwich, since you think pizzas are sandwiches. Well, pizza, I mean, pizza are sandwiches. I think that's pretty incontrovertible. I don't think anyone I don't know. I'm agrees pretty, with you I'm on pretty that. open on the, like, I'm pretty open to what is and what is not a sandwich, but I don't think pizza is a sandwich. Well, it's because you were very, I mean, listen, it's an open Listen, you don't Italian think sandwich. like a person who has evolved, Gary, and like Tim. Apparently. Its base is bread. It consists of cheese. So sauce, you're arguing is it's an open-faced vegetable. sandwich, then? It's an open-faced Italian okay. sandwich, yes. It's not. Sandwich you're wrong. Is a broad term under which, it's like an umbrella under which consists several variations of what sandwiches are. Okay. And to be sure, pizza is uh, you know, it's an unusual cousin of the sandwich family, but unquestionably fits within that kingdom. Gary, is a wrap a sandwich? When you no. go, when It's not. When you go... See, if you say no, then we, we can't have the... Of course when, you, it when you go... And it's not! When of you go to a restaurant and you look at a menu, you will see one of sandwiches two sections. Sandwiches and wraps. Or Sa- sandwiches and wraps. Sandwiches slash wraps could be a section, or you'll have a sandwich section and a wrap section. And then guess what? You might have a pizza section, too! They're all Twix. They're not. Mm. They're not They're all, all Twix. All That's sandwiches. the whole problem. Back to this black licorice thing, by the way, too. Yeah, That's another real old the person best. thing to like. What do you have? Just scarf down your black licorice with your fucking Werther's Originals? I don't mind a Werther's Originals. I like Of Werther's. course you don't. They're, they're better than... They're, they're there's, like, really off-brand hard candy. Off My brand favorite hard candy candies. are the Scotch Mints. Sco- like, Scotch Mints. There you go. See, I'd take a Werther's over a Scotch Mint. I also will say I've had a long-standing belief because some people, because of their obvious and rightful hatred of black licorice, don't like... 
Jaeger because it tastes like black licorice. Yeah, but you, only, you, yeah. Only, you only consume Jaeger for like a half second. Yeah, but like, also... It's not like you're sitting down and having a delicious glass yeah, of Jaeger. But also like black licorice you have to compare to the things that are like black licorice, which are other candies. And all other candies are better than black licorice. Where a black licorice thing. tasting alcohol... Any alcohol that tastes like candy, even if it's the worst candy, is probably still one of the better tasting alcohols. Also, what? when this first came up, it wasn't even black licorice that Tim like. It was black jube jubes, which are the, are, yeah, the nut low of jubes. They can just get rid of those. That's terrible. They're excellent. They're they the get best stuck in your jubes. even jube jubes in general get stuck in the back of your teeth. Like you got to pick them. It's it's not worth it. Also, let's go back to this breakfast thing. So you had a bowl of special K, right, Tim? <laughs> What did you have for breakfast this morning? Do you even eat breakfast? I don't eat breakfast. See, I eat breakfast. See, what I had, I had a bit of ground beef mixed with spinach, eggs, and some turkey bacon. That sounds relatively bre- refined. What's that? And so, black beans, actually. Sounds pretty refined. It was. It was very good. Sets me on course for a good, healthy day. Yeah, I should eat breakfast. I've been told that many times. Yes, because, right, Special K is essentially just like eating oil, right? Special K is, is very good for you. It's healthy. It's nutritious. Uh, it's, it's a very good breakfast. It's, it, it fills you. I'm shocked you actually don't eat Count Chocula. I don't eat those types of cereals. Those are for kids. <laughs> so those are no, for kids? Specifically, those are for kids. Yeah. Spe- Although I shouldn't say that. Cause Tricks I specifically Oh, one sec, one sec. What were you going to say? I shouldn't have said that because I actually had a juice box to go with my cereal. <laughs> I forgot about his juice box addiction. Remember Oh, remember that time the straw wouldn't go through? Yes. No, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't go through. Is that it was cracked. <laughs> Did and you write a letter? It was cracked. I couldn't use it. And I had to, like, suck the juice out of that little hole. Did you do this on the train while reading your newspaper? No, then, it was in my office. I bet you if you, I bet you, if you did that on the train, people no, would look away from their yeah, phones. people would get on. Actually, they'd start filming them on their phones. <laughs> look at this mental case I saw on the train today. Did you see? Uh, no, I mean, I was telling you guys a couple of weeks ago I was on the train, in the, in, like 9 o'clock at night, and a less than, let's just say a gentleman who doesn't have a home. <laughs> Was across from me on the train. He was had it a, a ho- open what? bottle of Gatorade. Was it a bum or a hobo? I think it was a hobo. Oh, but did it he have a, a did, bum. Uh, I can't tell. A, bu- he was a, a bundle? A bindle? A, a bindle. A hobo is clearly defined by having a bindle. No, there was no bindle. There was a bag. But like he, a garbage I feel like bag. urban so hobos have shopping something. carts, though. Maybe, but he was riding the rails, so this is a tough, the tough guy situation. He a half open bottle of Gatorade. Okay. He opens the top. He takes out this bottle, bottle of hand sanitizer, squeezes it into the Gatorade, shakes it up, and has a blast right in front of me. Better than black licorice. There you go. Uh, I feel black, like black here's the thing with phones really, on really trains, good. though. Tim. And black licorice is great in all of its forms. For no, example, I like the pipes. Would you put it on your sandwich, aka no. pizza? No, I like black licorice pipes. I like the little black baby licorice babies. Those are excellent. I like just regular, like Twizzler style black licorice, black jujubes. They're excellent. They're the best kind. Ugh. I was going to say this. I feel like we need to do, I don't, we don't, do we even need to do a poll on this? No. No one likes black licorice. No. Oh, Only yeah, the sell, weirdest people like then? black licorice. Why do they sell it if nobody appara- likes Because apparently you've cornered the market on getting it. And we've been over this a hundred times. Sometimes it's just stuff that they produce and it gets thrown in as a part of the deal of what you have to buy to get their other stuff. Because if I went to the store to buy black licorice and they didn't have any, I'd freak. Uh, well, we know all about how you freak out at, like, people who don't care working at grocery stores going back to the time that you yelled at the poor produce man for not having ripe, li- ripe uh, avocados. What do you think he was going to do about it? You think he really cared? He's like, who was this nutbag talking to me about ripe avocados? Listen, I demand satisfaction when I go to a grocery store to spend my money. And if I'm unpleased, I'm going to speak to somebody. I'm not just going to take it and smile. I am, uh, I'm going to express my opinion. Why are you talking to, like, the 18-year-old who just got nuked out back and is just off in la-la He's working there. He's an employee. He can take my problem to somebody who knows better if he doesn't. Yeah, I'm sure he definitely rang that one up the flagpole. <laughs> he could have. I don't know. He probably I don't got you, that message was lost. He probably got you banned from the store. I would listen. I was frustrated, and I needed to get out my frustration about me going to a grocery store and the produce I want not being available. I shouldn't have to put up with that. There was also no passion fruit. No dragon fruit. Dragon fruit. Dragon fruit. Which I do like. Uh, no, there was no dragon fruit. I like it with the side of black licorice pipe. Black licorice and pipe. Special K. Special K is excellent. What's wrong with you people? These are all excellent things to eat. There's, is there any more bland cereal than Special K? Uh, no, shredded no. wheat, which she already brought up. No. Shredded wheat's good. Plain Cheerios. A fan of those are the multigrain Cheerios. Those do do you at least, like, cut up fruit and put it into it? Well, I mix it up with uh, plain yogurt. Ew. So you take your plain dry Cheerios and put yeah. some... Is it, is it, I guess, vanilla yogurt? No, plain. 
Oh, literally plain yogurt. Okay. Plain yogurt, yeah. What does plain yogurt even taste like? Nothing. It's plain. Like nothing. Like nothing. It just has a sort of a, it's got a slight acidity flavor to it. And this is the man whose palate has developed beyond us all. Well, it has. I, I, I want it to Not taste like. I want, you know, you know, I want everything to taste all. like nothing. Just you know, in all you. dystopian futures where like people just eat this gray mush that doesn't taste like anything, yeah, but it has nu- nutrients in it. Yeah, it's, it's true. Everyone just wears the same like silver suit. Yeah, everyone needs to be on the same page in terms of dress code, and they all eat it's gruel. All nonsense. That it's is your future. You're, you're looking for an Orwellian future here, Tim. No, I'm not looking towards an Orwell. I'm not telling anyone else they have to eat what I like. But, like, I'm purchasing things at the grocery store that are available at any grocery store or bodega that you go to. You go to a lot of bodegas? No, but I know that people who listen in the, in the United States have those things, and they go to them. So I wanted to connect to the people as a man of the people. I mean, you, you've, as a man of the people, you've really done a lot of connectivity today. You're, you're, anti, you're anti-using your phone. You're talking about eating fucking gruel. Called everyone's mother's cussed. I did no such thing. I stand up for mothers. I don't think that, you know, it, in some ways it gives people, a, Mother's Day gives people a pass to not talk to, deal with their mothers, except on that day in some cases. And I don't approve of that. I think See, I, I'm all in on so that. So you hate yeah. introverts. I can be you know what Tim is? Myself. Tim's a bully. Interesting. I'm not a bully. You're a bully. I'm being asked to express my opinion on these matters, and this is how I feel. All right. Well, I have, an, uh, I have a take for you here. So let's see what you think about this. Um, I was in a text thread with Tim earlier today, um, and it came out that Tom Brady is on the cover of Madden. And Tim's response was, what, was Ray Carruth not available? Feel like that's a bit extreme, Tim. I feel like I'm to blame for this, having definitely been the one to put Ray Carruth in Tim's mind last (laughs) week. Which, I actually didn't really get Tim's opinion on this, but for anyone who who missed, uh, I, I tweeted out last week, there was like a Goliath sports article that was Goliath. I don't know, but it was a clickbaity article. They got me because I was killing time on the desk between like technical issues. But it was each franchise's worst player in NFL oh. history, most hated player. And the connection for the Carolina Panthers, they, they made a they, they let Carolina have two uh, nominations for this, and it was Ray Carruth and Cam Newton. <laughs> And it was a single paragraph. And in the single paragraph, they went from hired someone to murder his pregnant girlfriend to da- dabs after touchdowns <laughs> and, is, and had a Super Bowl press conference, to which Tim probably ghost wrote. <laughs> Did it say ar- article by Top Cat? <laughs> That's one of the many nicknames. It's not the most popular one, but it certainly it's not one. Of, it's not one of your nicknames at all. You you get to be Tim Andercust. You get to be Custy Jerome, Cust Van der Sex the Eighth, which is a really good one. Custy Jerome is pretty good though. I miss the old names. <laughs> tea biscuit. We forgot. That's tea, tea biscuit Tim's dad right calls now. him Tea Biscuit, yep. which is just terrific. No, there's a, that's not. That's there's that's also an at Tea Biscuit Twitter handle out there. Oh, that one kind of faded a little bit. I feel like. Uh, yeah, there's enough you, to, you should get back on that one. There, there's enough to replenish it coming yeah. in. I believe that one only had like real cold tea party takes, though. So I think it was a very specific <laughs> point in our Tim lives. Yeah, it's funny how Twitter works. Like last night I was tweeting about Timothy Dalton and how much I was a fan of his, and then like the Timothy Dalton fan club like followed and <laughs> oh, yeah. did something I said within seconds. That, 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 that's how hurting those people are for some praise. <laughs> I, had a, I had a tweet uh, like four or five years ago. Just, I, li- I like it. One sec. I like that last night you were tweeting about Timothy <laughs> Dalton. Who's watching Bond movies? Yeah, that's coming up later. <laughs> I like Timothy Dalton. I like the Timothy Dalton Bond movies, but we'll get to that. Go back to you. Um, yeah, I had a tweet like, just built a barbecue for my mom, and then like, barbecue pit palace followed me on Twitter. It's very funny the way they like screen for words. Uh, I, well, I, like, didn't you say you were searching for like uh, places to go in Oslo, Norway, and within seconds the Norwegians were after you? No, I, yeah, I was just searching. Like I wasn't even on Twitter searching for it, and all of a sudden like... Come to Norway. The Twitter handle followed me on Twitter. I was yeah. like, oh, it's happening. There's there's some weird stuff. Like in, in Instagram, I remember a couple weeks ago, it, it suggested I follow uh, this one girl, and she looked kind of familiar, and I opened it up, and I realized it was a girl I went on like a date with three or four years ago who I have no connection with on social media in any sense, but it was just like her number was in my phone at some time. So it kind of like got that information through my phone and was like, oh, this is a person who was in your phone. Maybe you want to follow them on Instagram. And I was like, that is terrifying. <laughs> This stuff makes me feel like that uh, part from Parks and Rec where Ron Swanson takes his computer outside and destroys it. Buries all his gold? And well, just that, that, that kind of stuff is so creepy. 
Yeah, this is all part of your Orwellian future, Tim. Yeah, this is your fault. I, well, it's not my fault, but many people are just openly accepting and accepting of uh, the, the total mind control of the, of the state and various other apparatuses. Well, there is a, I saw a commercial for Match.com uh, yesterday. And the feature on Match.com, I guess you have to sign up for it to do it, but, you know, it probably doesn't work under those guidelines. It's probably real crooked. Crooked Match.com. It's better than being, the, it's better than being the failing Match.com. It's just crooked for the moment. True. But what you do is you sign up, and, like, you walk around, and it tracks where you go all day, and then it shows you other people on yes. Match.com that you may have passed on, yep. like, the street. Yep. That's creepy. Terrifying. Oh, God. That seems like it's, it's a rape app waiting to happen. That's, like, a real bad idea. Yeah. Even the Tinder sort of like you are one kilometer away from this person. One aspect. kilometer. You need to you need to narrow your range down. You need to be like, who's within ten feet of me? That's what you need to be doing on Tinder. I I mean I've been off. Is there a new like a new fun Tinder? Like I know Bumble was out for I a while. I haven't been on Tinder in a year and a half. I suppose that's true. Um, Tim, are you Tindering it up? No, I I the whole online thing just doesn't doesn't do it for I me. I feel like Bumble is taking the lead. I'm not sure if it's because people are just tired of Tinder. And I think Tinder Tinder had like a Tinder social aspect, but it also seemed very bad. Um, but Bumble seems like it's the new thing. See, this all ties into my first point about us living our lives through the medium of our phones. There's yeah, but it's not always bad. Pat met his fiance on Tinder. Like that's it's true. These these things work out. And sometimes. I'm as guilty as anyone of living on my phone, because I do, but I'm self aware enough to realize, as I am self-aware enough with most things to realize, that I'm spending way too much time on my phone. Have we unleashed that Life is passing me yet? by while I'm spending time on my phone. Like, that'd be a fun, fun little experiment. Listen, Top Cat, you have zero awareness. If this was Madden, you would have a zero. Oh, maybe, maybe a negative. I'm very aware. I know, what, I know what's up. You don't know what's up. Well, how do you feel about the fact that Brady is not only fully embracing the curse, but mocking the curse by walking under ladders and breaking mirrors? I wish him the best of success. But you don't. You've already said that you don't. So now, t- this is a really yeah. big thing. So the Madden curse is going up against... The Ander curse. The Ander curse. But the reverse Ander curse, because he's specifically trying to curse Tom, which we all know does not work. I'm not trying to curse or uncurse anybody. I don't care what Tom Brady does. Well, you, you apparently I'm, 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 do, since you compared him to Ray Carruth. Yeah, well, that was obviously hyperbole. No. I mean, I Ray- it like wasn't. It was you, that obvious. It, it's not true because you continued to defend the point for a good, like, 70 texts. No, that's not the point I was defending. <laughs> the point I was defending is that he is a he's a cheater, that he was a suspended cheater, and that I think Madden is not setting a very good example for the youth putting someone who was what is What is murder if not the greatest cheat? They, they put murderer Ray Lewis on the cover of Madden once. I can't defend that either. That was their 25th anniversary edition. I, I think it was their 20th anniversary edition. And, and they put Gronk Maybe. on the cover once, and you don't approve of his partying lifestyle. I don't. I, I actually like Gronkowski. He's one of the very few Patriots for whom I have no real animus. Like, as much as I'd want to have animus towards him, it's sort of a begrudging respect. I like Brady, who's I don't just a cheater Gronk. and just an all like around bad guy. Gronk. I'd like to hang with Gronk. I feel like Gronk, I, I realize that the, the caliber of athlete they were enlisting, and, the, and probably the pull that MTV has was sort of, and, and whenever they had to shoot the new season of the challenge, was, was limiting to, like, current athletes. Oh, Gronk but, like, would definitely Gronk be Gronk would win the challenge. Yes. No, he wouldn't. He would get hurt within about three episodes nah. after the draw. No, Gronk would win the challenge. No, he would get hurt. Like, when they had to play that game, with how many logs you can lift up, he would have, like, torn his ACL. I think he's made for the challenge. I really do. Maybe that's his future, host of the challenge. Oh, wow. I would, I would watch, I mean, I already watched the challenge. But I mean, Victor but... Cruz is hosting now. You just replace him with Gronk. Yeah. How do you think he's going to do? I don't think it's going to be great. He seems, he's fun like, to watch. I like, I, I just miss TJ so much. But TJ's, it's not like TJ's gone. He's just gone for this little mini yeah, season. Yeah, I know. So Tim, you said that Matt Ryan should be on the cover of Madden. No. So wouldn't that teach kids that, you know, you can lose at everything in life and, you know, you get everything you want. Oh, I don't know. Matt Ryan taught us all a loser. Lot that, that he's a loser. Defending NFL MVP and your team loses in the Super Bowl. Loser. You questions like an adult afterwards and don't sulk around like a child. I'm surprised like a you are sport. a Matt Ryan fan considering Matt Ryan is the Hillary Clinton of the NFL. Well, Matt Ryan also went to one of the colleges I despise most, which is Boston College. But I have respect for the guy. I think he's really good. I mean, he's proven, you know, for, for going into last year, for example, people were happily deriding on him, making fun of him, saying he's not that great, blah, blah, blah. 
And this year, you know, he proved that without a question that he's one of the best five quarterbacks in the NFL. So he probably wouldn't buy the game because he looks too old. Yeah, he does. He, he's, His neck would be freaking people out. But here's the thing. Tim's argument that Matt Ryan is really good and Matt Ryan is a hero because he won MVP and lost in the Super Bowl. Cam Newton wins MVP and loses in the Super Bowl. He's the biggest fucking loser in the world. Uh, Matt Ryan well, probably it, faced his demons afterwards and, and, and took press conference questions like a champ. <laughs> That was exactly my point. Matt Ryan actually took questions like... Who cares? Well, some of us care about sports. I know you don't care about sportsmanship, but I care about sportsmanship. And I heard Ray Carruth shook the hands of every player after each Carolina Panthers game. Ray, Ray Carruth is a murderer who's exactly where he belongs. With Cam, Cam Newton's Newton. not a good... Cam Newton's no role model. That's for sure. You certainly wouldn't want your son or daughter... What are you talking about? Behavior. I ordered one of his Coachella onesies. It looks fucking <laughs> awesome. Oh, yeah, what a surprise that he, he dresses in a way to bring attention to himself. What's I can't wrong? imagine he would do something like that. What's wrong with that? It's great. Yeah. I wonder if there's a way that the six foot six, 285-pound Cam Newton could walk around and not and dress in a way that wouldn't this make him noticeable. Sure he is, that he should already command attention just by being there. But well, no, th- he has to be. This goes back to your point that you think that everyone should be wearing those weird futuristic silver onesies. Exactly. No, I just think. And also, no one can get that big if they're just eating gruel all the time. <laughs> yeah, not enough protein. Only enough protein <laughs> for you to survive. I think a little bit of modesty never hurt anybody. No. Do you worry that maybe people this are, people are too modest? This these days. dystopian future you've planned out, Tim, would only end up like that Tom days. Brady commercial you. where there's a thousand Tom Brady's all dressed the same in some sort of weird Tom Brady like army. And then Tom Brady couldn't be bothered to go to the White House, which also really annoy. Anyway, let's, had to keep up Brady. appearances. He should have gone to the White House. Nah. There's no Can't be too buddy buddy not. with Trump. You got to keep that on the DL. But everyone knows that they're friends. He had his. He had yeah, a manga it's, hat it's a misnomer. Longer. They're He's, friends. He should have gone. There's he, no good. Re- the president. Any, and I was mad when Tim Thomas didn't go to the White House either. It's not. No, this is not a partisan thing. You get invited to go to the White House, you go unless you've got a family emergency or something. Why? What if he doesn't want to go? You should go. It's the right, honorable thing to do. What if you'd rather just stay home and have a beat? <laughs> It's a Bob Dole beat. Yeah, Bob Dole beat. <laughs> when you could have been in the White House, but you decided to stay home and just beat it. Yeah, imagine if Bob Dole would have been president in 1996. Six. <laughs> he had to go meet Bob Dole. That sounds like the biggest bummer in the world. It would have been an honor to go meet him if he's a president. Is it, though? Of course it is. Anyone who serves in the office, it's about the office, not the person in the office. But it's about the person in the office. If it's someone, no, I, don't want to, if it's someone I don't want to meet, then I don't want to meet them. I, would have go, I, I, would, no I personally means. would have went to go meet Trump. That would have been hilarious. Yep. Yeah, listen, I'm by no means a fan of President Obama. I think he was a feckless and pretty weak leader. But I would unquestionably have gone to see him at the White House if I was a Yeah, he would have tried to blow him up with one of those suitcase bombs. No, a top hat bomb. Oh, God. It's the top hat, top cat, top hat. But it's really a bomb. <laughs> And no one would suspect him. No. He's got the crazy eyes, though. I am a man of the people. Might give him away. Tim's going to attack Obama. You better watch out. I'm, listen, I think Obama's a lovely man. just think he was a bad president. Lovely man? You want to marry Obama? Is that what you're saying? No. Not, you're Trump's just, America, yeah, bud. Yeah, you've come full circle on Obama here. No, I haven't. That I'm you're in love with sure. him. Is that, is that why you didn't like Obama as president? Because you had to see Michelle too much? And it made you <laughs> jealous? <laughs> I think he's a, a perfectly fine person. Just I didn't like him as a president, but I still think you should go see the president. And so the fact that Tom Brady didn't and came up with some sketchy excuse, I just I don't buy it. It's like I think, I think Trump Justin orchestrated Johnson it. Slipping down the stairs, you know. I, 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 I don't buy it. I, I like that you will back any Republican ever, except for if they're a patriot. No, I like I, I like that's the line that you've drawn. No, that's not the line I've drawn. It's Tom out. Brady should have gone. Just mad at Tom, not big up in Wait, your boy did he Trump. Wait, did he say he fell down the stairs? Is that was, was that his excuse? No, it's, it's like Dustin Johnson. Oh, I was going to say, that, that's a big year for falling down the stairs. But anyway. Okay. So you hate Tom Brady, you love Trump, you're in love with Obama, but you hate, the, the, but no, you hate, no, okay. but you hate the nugs guy because he so got his nugs. characterizing so many things here, not that last part, but everything else where you were mischaracterizing. No, I don't think so. I mean, people can listen to this and make their own decisions on it. But you're I think right, they will. If I, they hear it, they, I haven't espoused love for Trump or love for Obama. I have been relatively derisive towards Brady, I suppose. You, you just said that you were in love with Obama. I said no such thing. Want, I said he was a lovely person. And that person. you want to gay marry him. I said he was a lovely person, which he is. But you hate the Nugs guy. Oh, the Nugs guy is exactly what's wrong with ourselves. Oh, Jesus, I just broke something. Tim, do, <laughs> Tim, do we know? Do we know the exact amount of uh, the exact amount of retweets the Nugs guy got up to? Like six million, I think. 
go. It was like 3.6 or something. So do you feel like this sets not only was already initially sending a bad message to the youth of the world, but now is sending the message to the youth of the world? You don't even have to meet the requirements? Well, this is it. He got like a sixth of the way there. So Wendy's not only just rewarding a loser who's a beggar and a mooch, now they're rewarding him for failure. It's like, oh, look, we found another thing in this world that the Nuggets guy is bad at. Let's just give him a prize anyway. Oh, but, you know, we're giving lots of money to charity. They're giving it to their own charity. It's still a charity. Like, but it's their charity. So? It's still a charity. Like, this is such garbage. This is why Wendy's is banned for the next year. Yeah, for the exact reason. Stock already yeah, going up. As soon as you put that on, on Twitter, the stock went up like a point. Like, you have to be so self you must hate your, You would have to hate yourself so much now to go to Wendy's. Because what you are doing well, is you are patronizing Let's be, let's be fair. I feel like most people whose like, dietary lifestyle revolves around fast food, even if it's Wendy's, probably already hate themselves. No, Tim would counter that with just saying that, you know, no, their palates are just so advanced that they know that the fast food is where it's at. I do like Wendy's, though. I like Wendy's, too. I'm going to go there more often now. I think so. And get some nugs. Because nug, oh nug lives matter, Tim. They're nugs, it, it, they, they, have, they have subpar nugs. Yeah, they're not great. The spicy look, chicken is a great sandwich. This, but what is the spicy was, chicken if not just a giant nug? It has better, like, uh, the batter. The breading is, is yeah. better, yeah. Listen, I was out on this parapet before anybody else, just about anybody else was, that this guy is a bad person. I don't person. think anyone else is out on the nug guy. Oh, I think there's lots of people who are out on yeah, the nug guy. Yeah, people who tried to be the nug guy, but weren't the nug guy, because the nug guy got there first. Can, no. we, can we do a promotion? The early bird gets the nug. So, Tim, you don't like the, that he was a cyber mooch. So what we need to do is rally the people to see if we can get Tim, Tim something for free. Free special K for a year. No, free black licorice. Yeah, They'll free. just give it to you. Yeah, like, free. oh, thank God. So, <laughs> this, is like, this is like Newman with the muffin bottoms. They'll just be like, oh, finally someone is here to take the black licorice. We got no, a, a whole have, have, warehouse full of it. <laughs> and we can't get rid of it. We give it to this guy. wedding, they had a candy bar. And they had a whole big bag full of the black jujubes that nobody ate that they gave me. So, how many retweets do you think it would take to get free black jujubes or black licorice for Tim? I don't want this. This is, is exactly- there a no, 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 brand? Tim, Tim, it's, it's not whether you want it or not. This is what we're doing for you. You're a man of the people. The people will help yeah. you get your black oh, licorice. Let, let us beg for you. You yeah. don't have to sink to this level. We'll I don't do want this. I don't want this. Is there a specific brand of jujube that you prefer? Top Cat, what's your favorite? I like Allen. So Allen. So, so, so are those jujubes? jujubes or are those are jujubes or are those are just licorice? I think they have the jujubes. All right. So what we need to do but is get in this. touch no, with Allen's jujubes, and they will send him free black jujubes for maybe life, maybe just a year. I don't know. Let's get to a certain amount of retweets. I'll put it out. Everyone needs to retweet, and this is something you can pass on. I usually ask people to like rate it on iTunes and like leave a comment. Fuck that. Just retweet the things yeah. that Tim can get his free jube jubes. Yeah, do something do something nice for Tim. What's a fair uh-huh. number? Like 5,000? I'm, I'm trying to think. I don't want to overwhelm the good people at Allen's. Um, can we get to 5,000? I don't think we can. I don't but. think we can, but I also don't think you'd need 5,000. I really think you would only need like 50. I, I think even tweeting at Allen's, just being like, hey, can we have some black wickers? They'd be like, sure. Let's say 100. Take it off our hands. Let's see if we can get to 100. Ah, we can do better than 100. 200. Yeah, okay. 6 million. Somewhere in between. Somewhere in between 100 yeah. and 6 million. Yeah. Just so by, I mean, so by your logic, as long as somebody gets to seven retweets, that's enough to get them stuff for free. Yeah. Yeah. Free jujubes for well, you. Well, crappy stuff. Like maybe that's the lesson here: is instead of going after nugs. No, we don't want this. And the fact that you were saying on Twitter, people are now sending me things on Twitter, of like, oh, if, if we get up to 5,000 retweets, I don't have to write my pre cal exam. I was gonna or, say, I knew these these types would piss you off the most as a professor. How angry do those make you? It infuriates me that somehow your lesson plan and that your course waiting should in any way be determined by some random people on social media who know nothing about any of the subject matter. They just are doing it for the attention and for the notoriety. And this nugget guy is exactly the problem. He's encouraging this GoFundMe, look at me, narcissism, which also connects back to our earlier conversation with these people who live on their phones. There's something perverse about this millennial culture that encourages this type of cyber narcissism, this, this digital shamelessness that just envelops us at every turn. Someone has to stand up against this. Somebody has to shout stop, and I see myself as that man. I am the People's Tribune. I'm fighting for them. And here you are, 
out begging for black jujubes. Jube I am not, and I would please encourage. We should cut this part out actually altogether. But please, don't do that. I don't want this. That will not please me. It will only. If you really want to help me, you will not tweet it. No, I think they should retweet it. I feel it. like you're you're almost ander cursing the tweet. No, I just don't, I, do, I I don't want it to. Paul was trying to do this to me the other day. We were talking about the on Twitter. We were t- we were talking back and forth about these things called coffee flavored uh, bagels, and I was mm. I was in favor of them, but only at certain times of the day. He was trying to get me to like people retweet to give me free bagels. I don't want that either. Yeah, you want free jujubes. That's what we're talking about. Cyber mooch Tim Andacus. Yeah, see, this is exactly the. Pr- I don't want this. I don't want to live in this kind of world. Well, you're gonna you're gonna be bathing in black jube jubes, Tim. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be. You're gonna be like Scrooge McDuck, but with black jube jubes. <laughs> You'll be like Top Cat. Ooh. You just walk around with <laughs> hand bushels of black jube jubes, giving them out to the hobos on the train that he sees. People, a lot more people like black jube jubes than you think. No, zero. No, I don't think they do. Oh, okay, well, a lot of people do. Not I feel like if anything, if this does happen to get viral, people will be willing to retweet it just on the off chance that by you taking these free jube jubes, they are less likely to ever come in contact with a jube jube. That's a great yeah. point. Yeah, that, that's a very clever point, Gary. I think it is. I think yeah. I think people would actually people do get that. Behind this, I mean, yeah. I'm going to do it because of that. Yeah. I don't need Please black don't. jube jubes around. No, Tim, we're going to get you free jube jubes <sighs> for life. Black ones. Maybe some pipes, too. Black licorice pipes. Now, those I enjoy. I don't want to bag and ask for them. Oh, I feel I like for a second there, you almost you almost hope we would switch to the pipes. No, no, just I do enjoy the pipes. What else you got? Uh, what else do I have here? I have some irritation at these new ads that I'm seeing in both movies and in buses that encourage people to behave in a certain way. They're driving me up the wall. All right, what else do you have? Uh... Well, I mean, you sounded like you had something on your plan list. No, no, no just keep, keep going. I, I want to. I want to. Well, those are the four things I had on my list. All right, okay. we'll go back to that one then. What about these advertisements really so, like, bother you? Maybe you see them in Toronto as well. We have them here in Calgary and other places. Uh, they're like ads that are encouraging you to behave in public, like like don't example, murder people. No, like for example, on the train, and my, my office maybe was telling me about this. And he's right. Like, I was looking at them; they were infuriating me. These like signs in the ad spots that say, well, don't be a blocking bunny. And there's this picture of a bunny blocking the entryway for people to get in and out of the train. No, door, no, no, right? Those are great ads because people those, do that. It's, yeah. It's, it's people, people, of, people need to be told no, not to do that because better. they do it. No, they don't know that. Stop. If they knew that they shouldn't do it, why do they stand there and do it all the time? Because they are greedy and mean and they are not going to be convinced by an advertisement to stop being selfish well what if we took to twitter and said if they get a thousand retweets then they have to stop doing it it's the same as those ads the movie theater where they say oh please turn off your phone and don't text during the movie we don't need those ads people know not to talk during movies. no they don't they they really don't know better there are people who don't care because they are ignorant and selfish you're ignorant they are they're ignorant. They are. <laughs> they know better. They do it because they don't care. The ads are not going to dissuade those people. They just, they, so that, so they're, your they're point, so the self-absorbed. point you are trying to make right now is why even bother because society is so messed up that it doesn't even matter what you try or what you say. Bad people will just be bad. No, so we it, should all give up. Hunker sicker, away in our bunkers and eat our black licorice till we die. Well, Tim, it's, it's also, a you... It's society you, that has to encourage people to be polite and encourage people to be nice. You should already know better. People do know better. They just choose not to know better. Well, put it this way. Not Find ev- them. Not everyone... everyone well, if you're caught texting on your phone in the movies, you should be thrown out by the... By other. who? Yeah, who's who's going to throw, throw you out of the out? movie? The usher with the flashlight? Yes, he should throw you out. And I have never, I have literally theory. never seen an usher in a movie theater. Tim, if it, I tried to throw you out, out, I would blow my back out. It would often come out at the beginning of the, the, at the beginnings of the movies, right? They dim the lights. They sometimes will come in and say something before the movie begins. Occasionally, I, I, I am, I am not even exaggerating. I have never in my life seen an usher in a movie theater. Oh, I have. He, he, goes to old, he goes to old timey Simmons. Does he cinema. wear? Does he wear like a the like red a beige red and the hat, yeah. like no, the Fez no. hat? <laughs> no, but they, they they do exist. And if you're caught texting, you should be thrown off or thrown out of the theater. Banned from movies the for a year. And you are 
if you're putting your bags on the seat next to you to block that seat, then the transit police, when they're on there, should fine you and throw you off the train. We don't need ads to tell people to behave. People know better. So, they just need, so we just need to make some examples of people. T- Tim's solution to this is not put up a sign telling people that maybe don't know or maybe didn't think about it, and it reminds them, like, oh, I'll take my bag off. He wants the Gestapo to come in and pound you down and take you off. Well, we already have transit police to come on, at least in our city. To they do. Remi- I think the transit off. police are the closest thing we have to Gestapo in our current society. And they're in, and they're, they can take you off for whatever reason. They have. I mean, they have much. They, they they believe they have far too much authority and power. I think dressing them like cops was the first mistake. Makes them think they actually like kind of like remember that that Seth Rogen movie Observe and Report, where he's like mentally deranged and ends up like shooting a guy. He's a mall that cop. Movie. That sounds like Tim. Yeah, Tim kind of looks like Seth Rogen too. A little bit. I've been told I look like William McGirt. I look like Seth Rogen. I look like Jonah Hill. These oh, are you look like, uh, no, wait, you look like... Brian Windhorst? No. Because <laughs> Feinberg, Feinberg looks like Brian Windhorst. Jamie, Jamie yeah, Zato sent us a tweet earlier this week. that Oh, you look like Jimmy John's, apparently. <laughs> yeah, apparently. And I've been told I look like the kid on Bad Santa many times. <laughs> oh, Thurman Merman! Yeah, I've been told that, too. Do you like just sit, like, sit at home and whittle pickles out of wood? <laughs> All right. Here's something. Yeah. Tim, here's something. My point was, people need to be made examples of, rather than putting those ads. That sounds on. like a well, dangerous. How, how path. about this? If people are cheating, like let's say someone, like a woman, puts down her bag on the seat next to her, and then you can't use that seat. So what you're suggesting is that the ticket cop comes in, takes her out front, and while the next train is coming along, throw her in front of front of the train, and no, that will learn the people. How, it's right, a visual example. How. People will get it. Then they'll know not to do that. Just like when Harrison Ford threw the Nazi out of the Hindenburg thing and Indiana Jones in the Last Crusade, when he was trying to collect tickets, like, get your tickets, and then they all got their tickets out right away, didn't they? No, no, listen, I'm not recommending we put someone in a whirly gig or something. I'm just saying that we should just ensure. I don't know, you said make an example of it. It was a very loose sort of threat. You have to leave now. You're breaking the rules. Politeness shouldn't be encouraged by advertising. People know how to be polite. They know the rules of polite society. They just choose not to follow them. Well, what about that? Well, what I, about that sign that says "Don't talk to the driver"? Then he has to tap it because people are talking to the driver. I have never seen that sign in my life, by the way. Because I always say hello to the driver. When I, I feel like at this, course you do. At this point, <laughs> let's just take, take out like stop off. signs and traffic lights because you know when you come to a four-way intersection, you're supposed you to stop. stop. Yeah. Like that's just common knowledge. So. I, like, why don't we just we just take this all of this out of the people's hands? If you mess up, you're made an example of. Uh, maybe you don't get your gruel for two or three weeks. Or your silver suit. <laughs> you have to walk around naked. No, yeah, 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 yeah. Marked. T- Tim will come out with a baseball bat and smash you in the kneecaps. <laughs> I don't yeah, like the like, uh, Listen, like I have... Kathy, I have pro- like Kathy Bates in misery. I, I would also say it's probably worse here than it is in Calgary when it comes to people. Oh, like, sure, yeah. Far more people use transit. There's more types of transit, and there's just a lot of people that aren't from Canada who are around in and downtown very, Toronto. very few TTC ticket control officers. It's also like when you're using an escalator. If you're yeah, not walking the up the escalator, you should hang to the right. Yeah. I know exactly. that. People don't observe by those rules. I don't lose my fucking mind about it every oh, single I do. time. I say things. <laughs> what do you say? I also don't like it when someone tries to get in an elevator before you let people off an elevator, and I make that comment. Sure, that's big on the subway, can too. I, can I ask you a serious I question, though, Tim? How often off would you, you say, uh, on, like, if, if you were to encounter 100 escalators in a week, how many of those escalators are you actually trying to walk up, or how many do you just let them take you up the stairs for you? Uh, I would say 95% of the time I stand to the right and let it take me up. Oh, that's so then so why cast. are you so concerned about this? That's so cast. Just walk because up the escalator. I always leave space to the left for the people to walk. Yeah, I know, but I'm just saying if there's someone up there who is blocking the way on this 20-second journey. Yeah, how, how does that ever How does it affect you? you? It, it's not done. Or are you, are you just someone who, who realizes that as, any, as a man of the people, as a member of this society, it is in... To ignore this would be would be such an injustice upon yourself. The whole system works like a finely tuned watch, and if one thing goes wrong, it's mass chaos. And it is everyone they, has to observe. There's really the little pieces in watches, and you need those little screwdrivers, and those are you tough do, to use. But everything functions can't, exactly right. You can't, and if one little thing goes wrong, the whole thing goes kablooey. You need little hands like Carney's. You, you you can't have those fat fingers like Homer and just use your palm to mash down on the on the. Oh, you're, Dial. You're dialing wand. Yeah. 
All right, last thing before we get out of here. Tim, I'm going to let you choose of the topics that I have on. So here are the topics. We can save them for another date. But this is what I'm looking at right now in terms of topics that you get to pick from. Wait till I finish, and you can come up with it. One, Wi-Fi at coffee shops is one of them. Mm-hmm. Larry Wilmore's new Ringer podcast is one of them. God. Left-wing people imposing their views on you <laughs> is one of them. Uh, you Which not, I feel like falls into the Wilmore category. People not being able to drive a standard is yeah. up there. Um, that. Bond movies is one of them. Really and good stuff. One, we should have gone with your list. And one of them is Trump's specialty menu and Mike Pence's specialty menu. Wow, these are all excellent. I, I think they're all great. I don't know how to pick. you got to pick one, Top Cat. Let's go. Well, it's your totalitarian you think, society. You get to choose. Which ones do you think can't be held over? Like um, the Wi-Fi one we can hold over. Well, let's, let's do the Trump. Uh, I feel like that's pretty the most topical That, of that is all, the most yeah. topical. So like we'll, the Wilmore one, it's like, uh, that, that's quick. He bombed on TV every night for 18 months. He'll bomb on, on this podcast again, and it'll be no different. No one will listen just as nobody watched, and this unfunny poser will not be on any longer. So we've dealt with that issue. You're also a poser driver because you can't drive a standard. We can, that can hold over. Well, my position is on that very clearly. I feel like I'm actually that unless you're a trucker, you don't need because you losers can't actually drive a car. I don't. No one needs to, I guess we're talking talk with this now, no one needs to drive a standard unless they're a trucker. We all Automatic need to live with public to... courtesy like it's 1847. But when it comes to cars, you're all about progressiveness. It's not about, it's just about ease and necessity. There is no just, there's no, it, I am of the opinion, and I think I'm right about this, that there's a real peacockness to having a standard car. Because people who have standards like to let you know that they have a standard. It's because they know, can oh, actually drive a car. You can't. They, I will this say is exactly what I'm talking about. Cars, cars you know with standard transmissions are can't. cheaper to insure because they're less likely to be stolen. That's kind of a nice little thing. I mean, and if true. thieves could drive, if everyone could drive standard, then thieves would be thieving those cars more often. And also, here's Tim's stance on this. He likes automatic cars because there's no reason to drive a standard. Yet he is very anti self-driving cars, which are even oh, easier. I was gonna say because would we go full demolition man and just have the sort of like cars that drive themselves? They, we should. And all restaurants would be Taco Bell, and they'll all serve that gruel. Oh man, I would drink so much more. And I would buy a car. I just get around everywhere. It just takes away my agency. I'm afraid if we allow some self-driving cars. Eventually, we're going to have to only allow self-driving cars because if self-driving cars are much safer than than person-driven cars, well, then it would be unethical to allow people to continue to drive. Agreed. And, Unless know, they drive a standard because then they're actually driving. And, like, the number one profession in several states in America is truck driver. That means their jobs are going to go away. So what? Uh, we're not ready for So, so if, if you were alive in 1919, let's say. Okay. And, would you have been anti-car because it got rid of the horse and buggy? No, I don't think I would be anti-car. I Why? It got rid of those jobs. But it also created new jobs. So what you're saying is self-driving cars would not create new jobs? Not at the rate that replacing car, uh, driving will. So no, we, can, we, cannot, we, we cannot make things easier for ourselves because it takes away jobs. Well, like, this is it. Remember I quoted that thing earlier, that these things that we make, these inventions, are just toys. That don't that take well, away. Yeah, but this They're this insane. in particular, as as someone on the right wing, wouldn't you wouldn't this be right up your alley where this would be a thing that would benefit the top, the elite of society and yeah, well, be taking away jobs from it, low it, middle it would, class no, people? No, it, it would also it would also economy. benefit the manuf- manufacturing sector, because then you wouldn't have crazy truck drivers up eighteen hours a day trying to deliver stuff. It would just be a self driving truck. That's true. Listen, there are unquestionably some benefits from self driving cars, but the downside will be massive unemployment. And it will be a lot oh, of individual liberty. Oh, and man. I just think that the, the, the costs don't outweigh the benefits. I see, now, I do. Want to talk it's about convenient the, for me. Diet? I think that's a fun one to talk about. I just feel like if you don't talk to Uber drivers and just treat them like robots, it's basically the same thing. Yeah, but sometimes they give you a bad rating if you don't talk to them. But I don't want to get really? an Uber and talk to a fucking driver. Like, okay, shut like, the fuck up, pal. I don't, I don't like, I don't like how they can give you ratings. Why? Yeah, okay, They're the like, ones providing the service. Don't rate me. No, I, I mean, I get it. I, I get it, too, but eh, not for it. Yeah, but people who live in real Canada outside of Toronto are... What, okay, what is real Canada, Tim? That's just me being dismissive of Toronto. And, uh, people and, who live outside of Toronto or Montreal or Vancouver... Pretty sure that's just water. Uh, you know, the millions of people who live outside of those cities don't... Yeah, well, you, you live in the city that uh, features no cowboys, yet there's a bunch of accountants walking around wearing cowboy hats and cowboy boots. Yes, but we're not taking Ubers everywhere. Why not? People drive. Oh, so you're not providing jobs? Yeah. Why, why are you squashing the Uber business? I'm not against Uber. I'm pro-Uber. Seems like you're I'm pretty against, against Uber. 
I'm against the idea that Uber should just replace people driving places. Why? I, I take an Uber to and from work every day. That's perfectly fine. But I'm not. But I don't. It sounds like it's everybody. It's, why I don't not? want to live in a world where everybody is doing that all the time. There's something to be said about driving yourself that creates. But so as we to, even came down to it, you don't even know how to drive. I do know how to drive. Okay. All you need to do to drive in the 21st century is to use an automatic. Unless you want to show off and pretend how cool you are by driving your stick shift, there isn't a good reason for it. And people say, oh, I have more fun. That is like the people who say, I went to school outside of Boston. It's the exact same thing. It's no, it's not. Driving a is way better. I, I would not want to drive one in downtown Toronto because there's too much stopping yes. and starting, but the actual driving experience of using oh, a standard yeah, is way better. So great. You can go faster, for one thing, which okay. is awesome. You get awesome acceleration, which is terrific. Yeah. Look, uh, I, I will okay. say this. I am with Tim in the sense where I have I have attempted to learn how to drive a standard. Me too. I'm not good at it. Oh, so you guys are you're just bad at it. That's sure, why Tim hates that's it. fine. But I'll just say this is yeah, this, this is, is not, kind of the weird thing for me is when break. I saw this as a topic with no sort of direction as to how the conversation would go, I assumed Tim would be pro every car being a standard. No, no, I'm against it. Back yeah, I know, but I'm just I saying think... you're this is so off your general viewpoint that I feel like we should acknowledge that. Well, this just shows you that I can't really be put into any boxes. That I am uh, really just a free-floating agent of, of common sense and reason. So next, because, th- next thing we're going to have is if you're caught driving a standard, you're going to be need to be an example of. And they'll take no, away they'll take I away your car, car company, but you can't ride public transit because you won't be able to decipher the signs because there won't be any. If you're kicked I kicked off like, the train, you lose your job as a truck play, driver because you can't get anywhere. I'd get rid of automatics, or sorry, I'd get rid of standards altogether. If I own like Ford or Chevrolet or something, I'd stop making them. I would send that directive to my engineers. Is it because it makes you feel bad about yourself because you can't do it, so you have no, to get rid of it? No, it's not sour grapes. This is not what this it is. It sounds pretty sour grapes. No, it's got to do with, I just think it's unnecessary. And I, I think it's just people bragging and pretending of how important but it really, is. But really, how often does good. someone brag about being able to drive, drive All a stick? All the time. Really, the you, en- who- you encounter a lot of people who just go around and guess, hi, I'm Pat. You know what? I can drive a standard. These things come up in conversations. They don't, they don't come up like that. Well, when, you, when you're the one bringing them up, I guess you're, you're the, like you're the look, constant here. You're, you're the Desmond like Hume of this conversation. Down their nose at those of us who don't drive standards and say, oh, well, you don't even know how to drive a car. This is precisely what I'm getting at, is that type of opinion. I feel like the five people you talk to know this annoys you, so they bring it up all the time, and it's really varying your viewpoint and, on and this. And the five no, of us all I know how to drive people, standards. I don't, think, I don't think people bring things up to me just to annoy me. I oh, really? Oh, that is a mistake. That is the entire vein of this segment. No, it's not. It's about me getting my views out to right, the people. Right, sure. He really does think that. <laughs> And he thinks that everyone agrees with him, too. I don't think everyone agrees with me, but I think that most people agree. Did you want to get to that Pence and Trump thing? Because that'll be dated if we, if we wait on it. All right. Yeah. T- tell me what happened here. So essentially, I mean, so Time Magazine did this whole st- – Trump brought a bunch of reporters from Time Magazine in to have dinner and sort of t- show them what's around the White House and basically just do an interview sort of thing. And there's a couple of great minutes, moments in the, uh, in the interview. One is that – he likes to take the elevator up one or two flights of stairs. He doesn't like to take the stairs. Sounds like you. Which is great, and which means the vice president has to take the stairs because the president and vice president are not allowed in the same elevator at any time. So that's a that, great that, that made me happy. And, you know, he's, just, he's sort of like so magisterial that he's taking the elevator up one flight of stairs. Uh, and then they, and there's no reason for this to be in the article. It's just them taking a shot at the president. But they have this whole thing about how the waiters know what he likes at dinner. And so when everyone else gets their vinaigrette salad dressing, he gets Thousand Island. And everyone else gets one little cup of sauce for their chicken. He gets two cups of sauces. And then for dessert, everyone has chocolate cream pie. He gets to have two scoops of ice cream. And everyone else just gets one, but Pence just had a fruit plate. Now, that doesn't need to be there. That is just clearly them sort of snickering and laughing at the president about not maybe having the dietary concerns that these people think are appropriate. I guarantee you that President Obama or President Clinton were not discussed in the same sort of way to make fun of them. This is just sort of a subtle it, way. It has nothing sort to do like with the, the dietary where they restrictions. Often, it's just so Trump. <laughs> people will say things like, you know, the thrice-divorced Donald Trump said this, that, or that. That doesn't need to be there. That is just them taking a shot at the poor man. Well, I mean, when I was reading right-wing media during the Obama years, it would be like, not really American okay, Barack the, Obama. In, Infowar said that the National Yeah, but Review, Alex, you are essentially Alex Jones. Ooh, no, I'm not. Like, the National Review would never have said something like that. Neither did Commentary Magazine or the Weekly Standard. What, like what, what, what about Top Cat Weekly? Top Cat Weekly does sound like a pretty cool publication. <laughs> better, they, they, better than Hard Rock Stadium? 
Like, and, and, and on Her, Fox. Hard, like, rock, hard guys, rock Cafe presents Top Cat Weekly. The important guys on Fox were never dismissing President Who Obama. are the important guys on Fox? The People white like Mulnow. Now oh, the white ones, yeah. <laughs> now it's Tucker, but before it was, you know, Bill O'Reilly and Hannity. They weren't, like, openly de- doubting the president's place of birth. You know who I like on Fox News? Ships. Ship. He's, he's a very good reporter. Now, Tucker has been fantastic since he got on there. Because all he does, if you, if you guys watch his show, I don't know if you do, but I watch his show, he just brings on a bunch of these weird lefties every day to talk, and he just destroys them. Oh, that sounds real competitive. Why is well, he bringing on someone who can he, debate with him? He does bring people like there. There are times they're professors or, or your, know, your strategists. Your first well, inclination was to refer to them as weird lefties. <laughs> well, they are weird. <laughs> Well, I feel like he's kind of cherry-picking at this point, don't you? He had a lady on one night who was arguing that breastfeeding is unnatural. I did want to bring this up with Tim. Um, Anderson Cooper's eye roll, yay or nay? Listen, I understand why he rolled his eyes. And, you know, I know what Kellyanne is up to. But for Kellyanne to say, oh, this is just sexist. Are you suggesting that Kellyanne Conway is, 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 you can see through her, 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 her lies? Yeah, like, I mean... Kelly, I mean, listen, attitude reflects leadership. There's a lot of lying going on in the Oval Office, so she's doing a lot of lying herself. I found that response. I watched the whole interview. I thought Anderson Cooper was very restrained because all Kellyanne was doing was lying for the most part, and he knew she was lying, and she very rarely comes on anymore because all she does is lie, and it's, it's, it's awful. How did, so, yeah, how does Cooper's Kellyanne, eye roll is perfectly fine with me. Kellyanne Conway looks like someone who smokes three packs a day. Yeah, I don't she think gotten, she smokes. Has she gotten progressively older? She, this she, has gone she on? just turned 50. Did she sell her soul for Trump to win the election? <laughs> hey, I want to go back to the menu thing for a second. Sure, let's, we didn't really talk about it. Yeah, I just, I just gave the, the brass tax about it. So the number one thing, my main takeaway from all of this is that Trump is ingesting, like, horrible food all the time, and so is everyone else, except Mike Pence. He yeah, has he's, to, like, a, he's he has like a reliever in the bullpen. He has, to, he has <laughs> to stay in shape by taking the stairs. He has to eat fruit salad. Like, he's, they're prepping him to be ready to go at any moment. Yep. Yeah, I mean, this, the day the president moved into the White House, like the, one of the very first things he did is direct then to remove all of Michelle Obama's healthy foods and replace them with what stuff he likes. Like healthy, like, like, chips. like the healthy Diet Coke? Which is like chips. Taco salad. The White House probably oh, yeah, makes a great taco part of it, salad. Everyone gets water to start the meal, but they bring the president a can of Diet Coke. Well, he's got the button that, like, gets some Coke. Which every rich person has. Yeah, so it's not, sure. Not special. That's like in, uh, in um, oh, what was that crappy movie where uh, Adam Sandler becomes rich? Oh, Mr. Deeds. Mr. Deeds, where he has the Hawaiian punch uh, <laughs> water fountain, which I wanted as a kid. Um, but I just, can I we, do can we assume president. that like, maybe the reason Trump takes the elevator is not laziness, but it's very possible he only knows how to get to the Oval Office one way, and it's <laughs> from the elevator? <laughs> that could be true. Oh, I figure he's just roaming around at night, just figuring things out on his own. <laughs> he's, just, he's just out walking around out back? <laughs> yeah, well, Where, his wife and kids is are here? <laughs> by himself. What's that? He's, he's by himself there. His wife and his son is not, are not there. That can't be good for him. Yeah, I guess so. It leaves him alone with his they're thoughts. Out, they're out in the forest somewhere. Yeah, his, his, on by his stumps. thoughts, you mean his grievances. <laughs> he's a lot like you on Twitter. Except, no, he's, no. except he says sad all the time. <laughs> he really is oh, a master of the 140 Rose character living. Funny. Oh, yeah. The tweet he sent at Rose yesterday I thought was very funny. Which one was that? Why is he going back and looking through Rosie's old tweets? Well, because this, he bears a grudge. Like, there's no tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I, miss, I miss simple Trump. I really do. I miss being able to like Donald Trump. He was, well, you still can. Uh, it's, it's tough. But I do enjoy that uh, he has terrible eating habits, and they're also very low-brow eating habits. You know, like putting ketchup on steak? So do we yeah, know, like do we know what sort of double sauce he gets with his chicken? Ketchup. <laughs> uh, <laughs> probably. Uh, I don't know. But as Tim would describe him, his palate has evolved beyond what ours are, so he just knows, Right. Just knows. My criticism was of your palate, not of my palate. Uh, no, not of other people's palate, just of yours. Just of mine, yes. Yeah. Coming from exactly. popcorn sandwich, Tim. Again, I haven't had one of those in years. You know what I think should happen? They is should... a popcorn sandwich a sandwich? Of course yeah, it is. I guess so. Of course it is. <laughs> yeah. like people. From sandwich, <laughs> everything's a sandwich, aficionado Tim. Um, not everything, just things that are sandwiches. So, what so, if I put a piece of bread? What if you fell down in the kitchen and happened to land on a piece of bread? Are you now a sandwich? <laughs> That's a borderline issue. <laughs> so Sean Spicer, let's say Trump fires him and replaces him with Top Cat. 
Oh, God. And then Tim is the mouthpiece for the Trump organization doing those press conferences all day. That would be amazing. I think I could do the job. It's a world I'd like to live in. It would just be an extended, everyday version of Cust Corner. Except I, I, would, I would promise never to lie. Oh, God. I would not lie. Would they have to keep you in the dark on things then? I would, I would, yeah, I would prefer not to know what's going on so I can the just say to the best of my knowledge, approach. that's not true. Yeah. All or, right. that's what the president believes. But I feel like, again, going back to this, he'd be better as Snagglepuss in that role because then he could sign off constantly as exit stage yeah, left. exit stage left. Hark. <laughs> Any final grievance before we get out of here? Any quick one? No, I, I think that's pretty good. you got a list of good topics there for the next one we can talk about because that Wi-Fi really absolutely burns me. That, that, that is always relevant. Why do you hate Wi-Fi so much? People shouldn't be allowed to use Wi-Fi. They should only be allowed to use hardwired internet. No, no, the Wi-Fi and the coffee Well, that shop, way, if, if people only had hardwired internet, you wouldn't be able to look up stuff on your phones. Ah, that's true. There you go, Tim. You should start the campaign to end Wi-Fi. No, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not a member of the Green but Party. But if you sent down Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi he wouldn't be able to get on answer. Twitter and get his free licorice. <laughs> That's true. Oh, please, I forgot. Don't, don't do that. So if we've learned one thing, is that you need to retweet the tweet that, that we put out. It'll be out by now. No, it won't be out. By the time you watch yeah, this, by the time you're yes, watching this. it'll be out. So go retweet. Let's see how many retweets we can get to get Tim free black licorice jube jubes for or just, life. Or just use your own hard-earned money and send him black <laughs> no, licorice. No, please don't do that. He needs the charity. He needs it. Oh, God, please don't do this. Well, that will do it on this episode of Cuss Corner. Cuss Corner, it's Cuss Corner. Cuss Corner, it's Cuss Corner. He's got the hottest takes with the highest stakes. He should be president of the United States, but it's Cuss Corner, it's Cuss Corner, Cuss Corner. <laughs> I really think we could call it something else. Gary, and thanks for uh, being back. We no missed problem. you last time. No problem. Although Cam was on completely on board with Tim Most on, tip, on yeah, everything say, yeah. until he started uh, saying that uh, burrito was a sandwich. Then that was enough of enough for yeah. Cam. Yeah, no, the only burrito was what got so him. It was the pop tart being a sandwich that got him. It's true. Yeah. You, you follow Gary on Twitter at Gary and Thorne and listen to his everyday podcast and show, The Rotation, about fantasy baseball. It is about that. Plug it. Um, it's about fantasy baseball. Oh, would I win if I did it? I would like to think so. I think you should just have Tim on every day. Well, I feel I like that no would be anti to, to the point. This, I got no chance to win fantasy baseball in our home league this week. I'm getting ruined. Oh, well, there's always next week. Oh, the home league where my first two picks were Noah Syndergaard and Starling Marte. Fantastic year so far. That's a pity. Yeah, it's uh, it's bad. (laughs) That's terrifying. (laughs) That's what he's going to laugh like when he gets his jube jubes all the time. (laughs) (laughs) How maniacal. Oh, imagine if we didn't do it with Jube Jubes and we did it with Skittles, so he'd just have to walk around saying, Skittle me timbers, Tim! <laughs> Such low-hanging fruit. You could have a pirate ship made out of them. Yar, these are my Skittles. Sounds like you need a SIG, pal. No, no, I'm good. I'm good. All right. I've actually radically reduced my SIG intake. Well, mm. what? Yeah, from, from, the like sa- from the sounds minutes. of that cough, it doesn't sound like it. It's down to like five a day. Yeah, right. Yeah, I've been working on it. That, that's such a lie. I guarantee you've had over 15 SIGs today. That's not true at all. I don't know. I had like three. 
Just wait until three months from now when smokers are on Cuss Corner. Oh, smokers are on Cuss Corner. There's going to be signs up. Hey, what about the signs that say you can't smoke, Tim? Yeah, well, well I don't listen to those rules. <laughs> I always really wanted to start. I don't have Instagram. Well, I do have Instagram, but that's a story for another day. I don't yeah. use it. But I just wanted to make it a just an Instagram account of me smoking next to no smoking <laughs> signs. I had this idea for an Instagram account where every time I went out to have a smoke, I would just take a picture. And you would just see the world through that lens. Sig a day? Well, sig a moment. I'd send down to five, sig six, a seven a day. Instagram would block that. You'd have to wait for Custagram to come out. I don't think that should exist since I'm not Cust and it's been verified. I don't think you get verified on Instagram. Yeah, I have. You get verified on Custagram. Yeah, you get verified. Most cussed, Tim. Must be at least this cussed. <laughs> oh. oh, this episode was off the rails. All right. That'll do it. I'm Pat Mayo. That was Tim Undercust. Tim Undercust. That's not my name. He's got serious <laughs> problems, folks. Remember to retweet him so we can get all the black jube jubes he wants. <laughs> I'm Pat Mayo. You can follow me at the PME on Twitter. Remember, subscribe to the Pat Mayo Hour on YouTube for the on-demand, uncensored video version. If you just want to listen to the podcast, you can do that on iTunes, Audio Boom, Stitcher, Google Play, or if you want to write into the Fantasy Sports Network, you can get a transcribed version of the show from Tim, so you can read it like a newspaper on the train, like a fucking lunatic. <laughs> Give me timbers! <laughs> I'll see you next time. <laughs> oh, Christ. <laughs> Do you ever wash down your gigs with a bowl of special K? morning food only. What, you've never you mm. never have a gig fit? You wake up in the middle of the night just laughing your ass off at like <laughs> two in the morning? Need to wash it down with some special K? No, that would be quite psychotic. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that, would, that would be yeah, the that line. Would, that would be the limit that's of psychosis? The line. Yeah, I think so. I think that would be the line. Oh, wow. That episode was untangled. Well, it's not even over yet. I'm still rolling. Oh, God, really? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. what's that? You just eliminate that stuff in post, can't you? No, uh, we don't do anything in post. This is actually live. Yes. I forgot to tell you, it's a live show today. Oh, God. Uh, well, good thing I kept my cursing to a bare minimum. I didn't. Nope. Yeah, I know. Okay. Especially not Gary. All right. Let's... I gotta go wish my mom a happy birthday or something like that. Tim hates that. No, birthdays are fine. It's Mother's Day. I, I think I've actually made a very cogent point on that. No. Way off base. <laughs>